Okay, good afternoon, pilot teachers and good afternoon, students. Thank you, sit down. Our lesson today will simply be based on revision. So all of those activities that you have done in terms of your presentation, I hope you are able to understand what the students have presented. And today, we are basically going to do revision exercises. You will be given time to complete certain activities, and then at the end, we are going to go through the correction, and you will be expected to give answers to those activities. So it's revision time. We are working on revision questions. I will have the questions on the monitor. I will um, maybe change after five minutes. Five minutes will be the maximum amount of time given for any one question. Some of those questions that you are going to be asked will need you to work on them for only one minute. Others may take two minutes, others three, but five minutes will be the maximum amount of time given for any one question for you to complete. You can discuss the questions with the person sitting next to you, but as long as you get your answers written in your exercise book. And then after that, we are going to get a couple of students to give out the answers for those questions. Okay, we will start on now with our revision work. We have 10 questions to answer, and I will tell you the time may be required for those 10 questions. The first one, you are asked to make note of the table into your exercise book, and you are asked to complete the table. The table has four columns. The first column has been done for you. The heading is the course. We have studied the river in three stages or three courses. The first course, the upper course, the second one, the middle course, and then the third stage, which is the lower course. The next table is wanting you to write down the stage. So what do you think should go here? The next column, the next one. Then the next column here is on dominant activity. In other words, what is the main work of the river in this particular course or stage in the second one and the third one? And finally, you're going to make a list of the different features which are produced in the upper course, the middle course, and the lower course. Okay, so that's the first activity. We have 10 activities to work on. I'll give you five minutes starting from now for the completion of activity number one. We're ready to move on now to the next three questions. This time ac activity or exercise two, exercise three, and exercise four. Exercise two first, what is the difference between vertical erosion and lateral erosion? Exercise three, in which part of the river's course is vertical erosion most important? And exercise four, in which part of the river's course does lateral erosion take place? I'll give you four minutes, four minutes only for those three activities. Question five, why does deposition take place? Okay, I've given you four minutes. Four minutes for question five, we'll move on. Question six, remember, you're supposed to be discussing those questions with the people next to you so that you can help each other to come up with the answers quicker. Okay, for question six, question seven, question eight, question nine and 10, they will be referring to one particular diagram and from that diagram, those four questions you will be required to actually answer using that diagram. Okay, we'll start off with question six. I will show you the diagram shortly, but the question would want you to describe the main characteristics of the river and its valley as shown in the photograph. Question seven, there will be a feature which will be marked with the letter A. What is the name given to that feature? Question eight would want you to explain how that particular feature is actually formed. Question nine, what is the action or what are the actions of a river of this type? And finally, in time, on the diagram that you will be seeing very shortly, the large bend in the river will be cut along a line labeled X to Y. You're going to explain how the river will achieve this particular cut, and you're going to also name the various features that are going to be formed or developed during this process. We'll start off with 
looking at the photograph or the diagram. Okay, the point of reference, the line X to Y, as drawn here with the red line, and the feature A is a feature which is found along this section of the river here. You will be required to identify what that feature is. By looking at the river itself, already you should be able to identify and work out which stage of the river valley this is going to be. And you're also supposed to be already able to work out the features which can be formed as a result of the action or the work of rivers at this particular stage. Okay, question six. From that particular photograph or picture, describe the main characteristics of the river and its valley as shown in this particular photograph. So at this particular stage, you describe the main characteristics of the river and also its valley. I'll give you at least four minutes so you can discuss and come up with the answers for question six. Have you got the question? We've got one more minute because Noel has asked if he'd like to see the background of this particular photograph. So therefore, there you have it. The question remains, but the background of the photograph so that you can, perhaps it might be able to help you with the answering of the questions, yes. Okay, we're on question seven now. Question seven, the same photograph or picture here. What is the name given to the feature which is marked A? There's a feature on this bank of the river here, and that arrow is pointing to that particular feature. What is the name of that feature? Okay, you look at the river. You look at the river itself. Obviously, if you're looking at the direction of the flow it's coming from, you see where X is, it's coming down to A, and then it's going down to Y. What have you learned about the bank or the bend of the river? Would that letter A be pointing to the convex or the concave bank? And then you should be able to work out what type of feature would be found there. The difference between a slip of slope is that if there is a slip of slope on the other side, what would you find? A cliff. Can you see that from the diagram? We have actually 10 questions to answer, but we are running out of time. So therefore, <coughs> question 8, 9, and 10, I will give those for you to complete for your homework. We have time now to actually correct questions 1, to seven. So we will look at the correction of questions one to seven, and then I will give you question eight, nine, and ten for the completion for your homework. Okay, shall we move on now with the correction of those seven activities? Okay, we'll check the answers for question one, which was the completion of the table. You were asked to complete the table. You check. The stage, you should have one, two, and three. I was impressed with some of the students who did go ahead and said the torrent or the youthful stage. Well done. The second stage, you put down the middle, uh, sorry, not the middle, but the mature order, valley stage. Well done. And finally, the third stage, if you put down old order, plain stage. Well done. So here we can have answers as one, two, and three, or where number one is, we have youthful or torrent stage, mature or the valley stage, and number three should be old or the plain stage. Dominant activity, that is basically talking about the main work of the river in those three different stages. The first stage, we should have vertical erosion. Second stage, lateral erosion. If you did put down some deposition, you will still be correct. Because remember, in the second stage, we have the convex and the concave banks. On the convex bank, erosion. I'm sorry, on the concave banks, erosion is dominant. And on the convex bank, deposition. But the dominant work will be lateral erosion. Finally. The last stage, the dominant activity will be deposition. Some of the features that we have studied or learned about, the first stage, you double check, potholes, rapids, 
interlocking space, waterfalls, etc. Can we also include plant plunge pools? Yes. Definitely, yes. Any others that we should also include? Very good. V-shaped valleys. If you had gorge, that will also be correct. Narrow banks. Fast or very fast flow of water. All those are features which are found in the first stage. You will be correct if you did say all those other features. Okay, let's look at the second stage. Features produced. The start of meanders. Slip of slopes, bluffs or river cliffs. Any other features? U-shaped valleys, very good. Also, the start of the development of flood plains. Because in the last stage, we are going to say well-developed flood plains. So the start of the development of a flood plain, you would have it correct also if you explain it here. The water flow, we say the flow is medium, perhaps in comparison to the first stage. Finally, the last stage. Sorry, if we, before we go to the last stage. Ovio, you have a question? Uh, can oxbows be, for, uh, can oxbows be formed in the middle course of the second stage? Could they be formed here? The start? of the Oxbow Lakes, definitely, because when the rivers start to meander, we start having the depositional banks and the um, dep uh, erosional banks. And it is the start of the meanders that can also lead to the start of the development of an Oxbow Lake. So if you do explain it in a way that it will tell us the start of the development of an Oxbow Lake, you could get it correct in the second stage. But if you just put down Oxbow Lakes, no. Because Oxbow Lakes are formed and found mainly in the, the last stage. But the beginning of them or the start of the development of an Oxbow Lake, you could get it right if you explain it here. OK, finally, on the last stage, the features delta, Oxbow Lakes, levees, well-developed floodplains, braiding, Peneplains, point bars, or generally just bars, any form of bars which are depositional features. They are some of the main features which are, pro are produced then in the last stage. Okay, double check. Your answers should be similar to what is shown there, and other features which we did not include, you can also include. Question two. Someone now will have to give us the answer. Read out the question and also give us the answer. Susan, read out what question two is and also give us the answer for question two. Um, what is the difference between vertical erosion and lateral erosion? Uh, lateral Erosion uh, is the resulting in a U-shaped valley and the vertical erosion forms V-shaped valleys. We double check. The answer is definitely correct. The difference between vertical erosion and lateral erosion. Vertical erosion, it is important for you to note that it cuts the valley downwards. And not only downwards, it also cuts the valley downwards and Headward, that means straight on and down, resulting then in V-shaped valleys. Meanwhile, lateral erosion cuts the valley sideways, resulting then in formation of U-shaped valleys. Okay, it's important you have V-shaped, U-shaped, but also include the downward and the headward cutting for vertical erosion and the sideways cutting for lateral to forming U-shaped valleys. Okay, our answer also is given, so you double check and make your corrections. Anita, question three. Can you read out question three and give us the answer to question three? 
In which part of the river's course is vertical erosion most important? Um, the upper course. Okay, very good. She's given us the upper stage or the first stage of a river valley. That's where vertical erosion is actually dominant. So if we have the first stage, the upper course, the torrent, or the youthful stage, we can get that correct because those are the answers, possible answers that we can have for that particular question. Terence, question four. Read out the question and give us the answer. In which part of the river's course does lateral erosion take place? The midward stage of the river. Okay, very good. It's got the middle stage, or the mature stage, or the valley stage. That should be our answer for question number four. In which part of the river's course does lateral erosion take place? The answer, the second stage of a river, or the mature stage, the valley stage, or the middle course or the stage of the river. Next question, question five. Question five. Marian. Why does deposition take place? It takes place because where all those eroded materials flow, which the river flow, the material will soon be deposited when the river flow is slow. Okay, very good. She's mentioned also about the speed of the water. Usually deposition takes place where the water flows a little bit more slower. When the water flows slower, that means that the river does not have the energy to actually move the materials. Therefore, the materials get to settle, resulting in deposition. So it's mainly to do with the velocity or the speed of the water. The flow of the water is slower at the last stage. Therefore, the stream or the river has less energy to move the materials, resulting in them settling. A lot of you, when you were asked that question, you were writing down the position is mainly to do with the settling. You are giving the definition. You were not asked to give the definition. You were asked to explain why deposition takes place. And the reason why it takes place is mainly because of the velocity or the speed of the water. The slower it is, the less energy it has to move the materials. Therefore, the materials get to settle. Question six, Caleb, read out question six and also give us the answer to that question. Describe, describe the main characteristics of the river and its, its valley. Start of the meander point bus U shaped valley. Okay, he's got three features the U shaped valley, start of a meander, and point bar in the features that he has actually identified from question six and the photograph. Okay, the question is to describe the main characteristics of the river and its valley as shown in the photograph, and his answer that he's given. Meanders, if we had meanders, that's correct. He said point bars, and point bars formed as a result of deposition, mainly on the concave bank. He also said U-shaped valley, which is definitely correct. And you can also go ahead to further describing the gradient of that particular valley stage. The gradient then is lower. So some of the possible answers, lower gradient, the start of meanders, deposition and erosion, mainly on the river banks. Anyone else with other possible answers you could have for question six? Christopher, question six. Gibbes, possible answer for, beside the ones we have looked at. Okay, Gibbes has an answer for question six, possible answer. 
Interlocking space. Interlocking space. Interlocking space. They would have been already moved and they would have been found in the first stage. We said here lower gradient, so obviously we should not be able to see any interlocking space from this particular uh, valley stage. So no interlocking space. Do you have a possible answer to go with what we have already? Anyone else perhaps an answer that you have got down and you're not sure of? No? Are we happy with those possible answers given? Okay, good. Then finally to the last question. The last question. Catherine. What name is given to the feature mark day? Slip off slope. Okay, slip off slope. She's given the answer slip off slope. We all happy with the answer slip off slope? No, um, Ovio is not happy with the answer. Who else disagrees with that answer? Okay, we pass the mic down and um, Ovio, give us what you think will be the answer for the feature marked A. Point bus. Point bus. Yeah, I'll definitely agree with Ovio for why it should be a point by and not a slip of slope. Um, does anyone maybe would like to try and explain why you think the feature here should be a point bar and it cannot be a, a slip of slope? Why? Why is it that we are not accepting or I will not accept a slip of slope? Noel, Noel will explain. Why am I saying that the feature will have to be a slip of slope, uh, sorry, a feature will have to be a point bar and not a slip of slope. Noel, explain. Uh, it is because it's on a convex bank where erosion is, uh, deposition is dominant. Okay, on a convex bank, deposition is dominant. It can also form a slip of slope. Why is it that from this particular photograph or diagram, I am not accepting the slip of slope? Rather, I am saying it is a point bar. Um, Silo. Because right across a slip of slope, you'd find a cliff. Yeah, very good. Can you see a cliff there? Could you see a cliff here, river cliff? No, you cannot. Here, this is a flat area. So opposite, if this is a... Uh, slip of slope. On the other side, you're supposed to see a, a river cliff because the river cuts and erosion is dominant, so you see a cliff being formed here. This is already on a lowland area, flat area. Therefore, this will have to be a point bar. On the other side, the continuous erosion of the bank, but not a cliff being formed. A slip of slope will be found on the convex, then a cliff or a bluff will be found on the convex, uh, opposite, which is the concave. And here you cannot see that. So obviously this feature will have to be a point bar. We're happy with that explanation? Yes. Okay, that brings us also to the end of the lesson. The other three questions will be um, completed for homework. And using the same diagram, perhaps what I'd like you to do is very quickly now, make note of those other three questions. Okay, first of all, question A, to explain how that feature, we said it's a point bar. So you're going to explain now how it is actually formed. Do we have the question down? Okay. Question nine, what are the actions of a river of this type? Looking at that section mainly. What are the actions of a river of this type? Do we have question nine down? Okay, finally, question 10. 
In time, the large bend in this river will be cut through along the line near or along the line X to Y. So in time, the river will be cut through along the line X, Y. Explain how the river will achieve this and then name the various river features that will develop during that process. Okay, do we have that question now? We finished? Okay, that will also bring us to the end of our lesson. Class, if you could now stand up. To the pilot teachers, our keyword for lesson 81 is braiding. Good afternoon and thank you, students.